Hi, and welcome to the 56th TiddlyWiki Hangout. I'm Jeremy Rustin, and I'm joined today by Branimir. Hi, Branimir, would you like to say hello where you're from and how you're involved in TiddlyWiki? Hello, um, I am, uh, my name is Branimir, and I am from Sofia, Bulgaria. I have been introduced to TiddlyWiki um, just occasionally three years ago while I was uh, searching for a nice uh, wiki type of uh, tool to put documentation there for my team. I work in a team of developers and although I have been a developer for some time, I am now taking the position of business analyst and system analyst. Okay. So I am not taking the position of a developer here but mostly as a novice user. Cool. Well, great to have you here, Brandon. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Mario, hi, would you like to say hello and where you're from? Hi, yeah, my name is Mario Peach. I'm from Salzburg, or from Austria near Salzburg. Um, yeah, contributed to Tilwiki Classic and Tilwiki 5. Indeed, I think um, you're now the number two contributor to Tilwiki 5 now, if I understood a graph that GitHub showed me the other day. Um, glad you could join us, Mario. And Nathan, hi, would you like to say hello and where you're from? Hi, I'm Nathan Kane. I'm a developer from the United States and I'm um, working with Tildewiki 5 both as a user and developer uh, for quite some time now. Indeed. Great to have you here, Nathan. Thank you for joining us. And finally, Ton, would you like to say hello? Hi, I'm Ton Gerner from the Netherlands, long-time user of Tildewiki and uh, made a few guides about customization of uh, Tildewiki 5. Indeed, indeed. Great to have you all here. Thank you very much for giving out your time. I much appreciate it. Um, we'll kick off straight away with a quick review of uh, some changes since last week, partly because there's been some discussion about some of this stuff over um, uh, on the discussion group today, so I thought it may be to kind of um, finish those discussions first. Um, so the new stuff is invisible when you first visit um, to Lewiki, uh with the new build. Um, and there's a couple of places where it manifests itself. There's a new tab on Tiddler Info, um, which now uh, lists a set of tool buttons, which includes the three tool buttons that are enabled by default, um, but also gives us checkboxes uh, for bringing in, um, for enabling the other toolbar buttons. And in fact, I can, those buttons are live there, so I can access permalink without having to um, add it to the toolbar. And one of the buttons, the more button, um, shows any other commands that aren't uh, visible by default. Um, and there's the other place where you can access the same functionality is in the control panel, which is in dire need of reorganization. So right now it's the third level deep of tabs and control panel where um, you get to adjust the same checkboxes. Um, but this time also for the um, page controls and for the edit toolbar. So at the same time as doing this, I've added a few more functions. So on the you can add a home button, a permaview button, and an encryption button um, to the page controls. The encryption button um, reflects dynamically the status of the password vault. So at the moment, this wiki is unlocked because there's no password in the vault. If I press the button and type password as my default password, um, now uh, the icon changes to a lock and indeed the tooltip tells me that clicking the button will clear the password and save this wiki without encryption, um, So, which that just did. Um, Permaview is, uh, well, as you would expect, um, gives us a link that embodies the most recently navigated Tiddler and the entire story list that is its context. Um, and the home button just uh, returns to opening the default tiddlers. Um, and then back on the, up here, on the view toolbar, we've got close others, which as per a discussion, I think it came up a couple of weeks ago, didn't it, Mary? Um, we've um, uh, uh, chosen a radically <laughs> different <laughs> icon <laughs> for close others, um, uh, which isn't just me trying to be perverse. It's um, wanting it to be visually simple because I think that the existing icon, I mean, sorry, I say the existing icon, the 
um, three axes and the zero icon um, is quite visually complex um, and I felt was making a um, quite a complicated visual metaphor of emphasizing the closing of the other tiddlers whereas this guy is supposed to make you think of targeting this tiddler by closing the other tiddlers but um, uh, with more of the emphasis on the fact that you're clicking on the tiddler that you want to keep, if you see what I mean. Um, um, I had the idea that it shows a focus or something like this. So yes, exactly, exactly. I mean, and, and I think there might be some scope. Yeah, I, I actually a full screen tiddler button was on my mind originally, so then that would <laughs> give us two possible meanings of focus. But um, the, uh, the, the old icon, I, I always wanted it to start a game of tic-tac-toe. Yes, <laughs> I'm it slightly had that for me. I was a little disappointed that I that I didn't get a game of tic tac toe. Um, the the clone icon I I think is okay. Um, we will need um, it, it, it might look it looks a bit like a calendar to me. Um, but then I don't have a calendar icon yet. Um, the other controversial one was permalink and permaview, which I really struggle with. Um, uh -huh. I like them so that because this is like like the hash so it's uh, yeah like a link to one tiddler and the other one yeah it's a uh, yeah multiple hashes <laughs> a dense <laughs> hash <laughs> well I, I mean I think um, the nature of the functionality that those buttons invoke is so complex and alien to most people that it defies any chance of a direct visual metaphor I think um, the only thing I don't like about the hash is that to a certain generation it might indicate something about hashtags. Mm -hmm. um, what will be their default uh, behavior? Will they be visible or not? No, my, my um, plan at the moment is to keep the default like this so that you'd, um, you only get the classic three buttons. So I went through a stage of wondering about this being the default um, which seems reasonable, but then it strikes me that all th all of these are relatively advanced features that by keeping them in the tools tab they're one click away anyway mm. um, and the visual complexity of that extra triangle I, d I mean I'm, I, I'm obviously the in, in um, Elsewhere, where people are grappling with questions like this, they would use user testing. But it just feels to me personally that a row of four icons is significantly more um, uh, cognitively um, demanding than three icons, um, let alone the two icons or the one, uh, one icon I'd really like. The, um, I, uh, my continuing thought is that of all of these icons, the one that has the least um, of a case for being there is the close button. Um, uh, there's a low level of background confusion of whether close means delete or not, which I think is understandable. But it also, the fact that we have to close Tiddlers, to me, draws attention to an undesirable characteristic of TiddlyWiki, which is that one has to, in a sense, manage the palette of open Tiddlers and it feels like, at least in some situations, we ought to be able to do a better job of anticipating um, that. Uh, Jeremy, uh, there is one button missing, which is the close all button. So mm. you could, uh, I think, you could remove it from the from the open list um, and create one for the, uh, let's say, the page the page tabs list or the page tools list. I might be inclined to keep it here as well, actually. I quite like the... Yeah, you, you, you can have both, yeah, but... Yeah, no, uh, I mean, I've done that, obviously, with the um, with the encryption stuff. I was... Yeah. I quite like the idea of um, multiple options. Um, but, yes, you're right. Um, we need to close all... Um... And the mechanism is the same, right? So that you have just a, a message... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the okay. thing... Oh, the other thing that's changed is um, <laughs> in a really stupid place, you have to go to advanced settings, um, but I did say the control panel needs reorganizing. You can now switch 
um, icons between icons and icons and text. And it's a bit useless at the moment because um, the various bits of text are clearly the wrong size. Um, is, there, is there a text-only version too? Yeah, you can... Oh. Um, oh, okay. Uh -huh. uh, and then it's... Well, no, it's better, I suppose. Um, but the... That's been on my mind for ages. You know, again, a bit of feedback we occasionally get is that people find the icons um, uh, too inscrutable. Um, but obviously it just needs a bit of styling. Mm -hmm. Well, if you ask me, I would uh, remove the info icon and I would uh, keep the down arrow icon. No, 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 no. No? <laughs> <laughs> no? No, 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 no. <laughs> the um, uh, if you do that, um, it um, it does work. Um, so in fact, let me put it back to icons rather than text. Oh, sorry. Um, so one of the thing, one of the approaches that's quite cool is you can actually turn the all off apart from the more button, um, which um, you know maybe for some people if they're closing the tiddlers over here. Um, it's nice and minimal, um, but I think the well, as to say, the the of the of the three standard buttons, the th the reason why the info button rather wins is because it opens up immediately to single click, well, to to one or two clicks away, a bunch of other bits of functionality. So it kind of um, it gives us a doorway to add lots of UI features. Um, that are all uniformly accessible. Um, so if I find that such a useful tool that I'd be disinclined to lose that. Edit, arguably we don't need an icon for, you know, maybe we should be double clicking or something, but it's the primal thing that TiddlyWiki does, I think, is you know, that flip between edit and view mode. So as I say, to me, for me it's close that I'd love to see the back of. And if we did that, I could also imagine maybe moving the info icon over here um, so that we've got less going on over at the right. Um, anyway, hopefully it will be... Uh, tell me, tell me how, how do you want to close the, the pillars then? If there is no icon? Oh, well, that's the unsolved problem. Um, uh -huh, okay. but, but, but I'm <laughs> In the sidebar? Through the sidebar is, yeah, is one but way. If, if I have reason, uh, I have reason to... Uh, the, the default most of the time. Yeah, I, th I mean, I think the... What, what about was, middle click? Um, there's not very consistent um, support for middle click. Um, or con control and double click or something like this, which can be the only easily done to close many tiddlers. The only downside of doing that, so we do have some functionality that uses um, that uses the control click. So if I uh, well, on the Mac, it's command click. So if I command click on a link, it opens the target link but doesn't scroll to it. Um, yeah, that's a very n nice feature. Yeah, and, and it makes good sense for desktop. Um, the trouble is that we've also got to target iPad, iPhone, Android, etc. Um, and there we don't have the same kinds of options, obviously. So it makes me feel that modifier keys like Control and Alt and so on make sense for things that one would only be doing on the desktop and I think there's a lot of editing activities that in practice at the moment you know most of us would choose to do on a desktop computer the kind of intensive working with TiddlyWiki but the general browsing around between Tiddlers being able to inspect info and so on and you know closing Tiddlers and so on um, I'd like that to work consistently across the desktop and across touch devices so that does really limit. Um, I mean, that that's why there's um, so few hover effects in TiddlyWiki 5 that I was very loath at the beginning to spend time on putting stuff in that wouldn't work well on mobile as well. Um, but but so open to suggestions, and one of the things that I'm hoping we'll all benefit by by standardizing this toolbar button stuff is, of course, it makes it much easier to experiment. Um, so we can evolve uh, themes and additions, you know, that customize things to the nth degree. I was thinking again to... Oh, sorry. 
Uh, yes, sorry to interrupt you. There was one thing you mentioned uh, about double clicking to enable you to edit a tiddler. Uh, I'm strongly against that, or at least if it's possible to be um, switched yeah. off, because there every every guy in uh, my team hates this feature because when they double click to select yeah. and copy some text, yeah. they get into edit mode. Yeah. I and I think there's a there's a companion problem that we've got with TiddlyWiki five now, um, which is that um, yes. which is never what people want to be able to do, um, never what people want. But um, I haven't so far found an elegant way to determine that the source of a drag and drop is in the same window. So what I will soon have to do is do it in an like, inelegant way <laughs> because it's obviously such a pain. And I'm sure you've had this experience of just dra you drag an image uh, a tiny bit and before you know it, great pain, great pain. Can it be made that the dropping area is just a specific square on the screen? Yes, we could. Um, but I think the... Um, ideal thing is at the moment the drop zone as it's called is the entire screen um, which only, which only makes sense when you're dragging from another window I think so my preference is to try and make the drop zone reject drags from within the same window but that um, we need to be able to have sub drop zones for things like drag and drop reordering um, that, uh, that that does obviously accept drag and drop from the same window, but it's great pain, great nuisance. Um, so let's turn to Branimir's questions, um, and the first one uh, says, "Should Story River?" be added as a concept in the docs. Um, there is a story view tiddler, but it is not defined. Branimir, thank you. That's much appreciated. That's exactly um, the kind of feedback that's very useful for me, um, directly actionable. It's very easy for all of us to say that the documentation could be improved, um, but specific pointers to areas um, where there are problems are much appreciated, and it's very easy for me to action that. Yeah, that. I was actually looking for the Story River uh, concept on the TiddlyWiki 5 uh, yeah. website, but uh, I couldn't find any much information. No. But I actually found it by looking at the Hangouts. So yes, you, yes. <laughs> other guys mentioned it uh, in the Google yeah. group, but I couldn't find what it really is, so it should be defined if it's mentioned. Yes, I think that's And right. if Story View is something different or is the same thing, I have no idea. Uh, yes, well, there's a few cases where we use, oops, um, where w there's inconsistent terminology being used, um, certainly. Um, but anyway, I'll uh, dig that usage up and uh, correct it. Um, next question from Branimir. What are the possibilities for printing in TiddlyWiki, i.e. printing a story river, and what about making a tiddler a page, um, which are very good questions. So... Um, the primary strategy for printing with TiddlyWiki is to arrange the tiddlers that you want to have printed out, um, and then, in my case, it's Apple P, um, to select the print dialog. And then there's a print style sheet which attempts to adjust the display to reflect the fact that we're printing. So um, we lose the sidebar, we lose the borders around tiddlers, and so on. Um, but I'm sure there are many cases where um, the layout is not optimal. Um, there's, as you can see here, if I did print this out, there's really annoying headers, um, headers and footers, uh, which every so often I research, but it appears um, that they're, they're not currently controllable um, yes. in the way that I expected. Normal cases, it's a browser setting. It should be possible to have browser settings. Yes, I think that's right. You'd switch them off in your browser and then get frustrated because TiddlyWiki can't do them either. But there are CSS features that help here. So it's an, it's an area that I think that we can uh, improve um, uh, and I'm keen to do so. Uh, yeah, I would like to say that in my uh, situation uh, particularly, 
I was trying to uh, put, uh, to print some part of the documentation, which is not the whole wiki, but just the story over that I wanted to arrange. Yeah. And actually, uh, I didn't find a nice way to do it. Maybe it could oh, be... But that's what I'm doing here. If you something. just say print in the browser, then what it gives you is the current story river. Yeah, I tried that, but actually I wanted uh, Tiddler to be a single page. And the only oh, okay, with a page saying, break in between each Tiddler, did you mean? Do you oh, mean yeah. Something like that. Oh, okay. you could, that's, you could that's, add, we can probably do that add some CSS. CSS. So um, let's let's just look at that because it's um, it's a it's a question that crops up. Um, so I can never remember the syntax for CSS page breaks. Um, oh, I clicked on W three schools. That's terrible. Page break before. Um, so page one probably. No, let's. Uh, page break before, I think. Yes, and page for, break for the H1. And for H1. Ooh, we might need to be a bit more specific than that, mightn't we? Um, I also to be the first, the first H1. Ah, okay. Um, Okay, so brand new, I've just created a. Aha, I created a style sheet with a syntax error. No, that is correct. Um, I created a style sheet, and now ooh, we get an initial front page, which is a little annoying. Um, That's okay. Uh, there may be some empty pages if it's exactly one page. I think that what's probably on the. Oh, yeah, because we said page break before. So we've got to say page break before, but not the first one, uh -huh. um, which I think may be not the kind of CSS that I can write on the fly. <laughs> but we can say that, can't we? Um, yeah, yeah, should be possible. But there you go, Brandon. Um, uh, the, so the short answer to that little part of it was um, that CSS does give us some basic control so there are things like, I, I believe some browsers have better widow and orphan support. Um, so at the moment, if I, if I go back to take that style sheet away, I think I noticed as I was scrolling through that there was a couple of, yes, here we go. So that's what I believe you'd call an orphan, where it's a line of the paragraph left over from the page before. And the last time I was looking at the relevant bits of print CSS, if I understand correctly, there are controls that more modern browsers respect that um, know how to avoid orphans and widows. Um, the other thing Branimir asked was about printing an individual tiddler. Um, and that's obviously not, um, well, it's not. Well, I was imagining something like a global print button mm -hmm. and a local print button uh, inside the tiddler. Yes. For example, yeah. I would like to print all the tiddlers and cl click the, the print uh, icon, yeah. or just a single tiddler with a print icon, something like that. Yeah, so I think we can do that. Um, there's a couple of options. Um, one is a new button that opens the current tiddler in a new window as static HTML ready to be printed. Um, the Another option is that we provide a different kind of focus button um, that, uh, say, full screens the current tiddler, and then while you're in that mode, it just prints that tiddler um, so that one would select the, the tiddler to be viewed first. Oh, I don't know. That sounds bonkers, actually. So, no, I think that is probably the... The, 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 the slight concern I have... So, <clears throat> we can do a window.open to open a new window, and we can inject static HTML in it, and um, it's easy for us in the browser to generate a static HTML representation of a tiddler. But the concern is that you'd end up with another window that looked like it contains one of the tiddlers from your wiki. And so your expectation might be that that window would update when you change any information in the associated wiki. 
Um, and that kind of thing isn't really, uh, you know, isn't, isn't um, well, in some cases it's not possible. Some of it is possible some of the time. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, so, so, so I'm not sure. So we, we've got a couple of options there. Um, in the meantime, the one sense in which you can do it is that there's the static renderings of TiddlyWiki. Um, so, so that, if I print it, um, uh, would be just that one tiddler. But I think I don't think that's really what you mean, Branimir, because that's a bit of a nuisance to you know you have to run up Node.js to create those things. The other idea that came to mind was about uh, the possibility for exporting the tiddly wiki. Or yes. exporting different tiddler, probably to uh, PDF first. Yes. Maybe. So there's well, so, so PDF um, there there is a JavaScript PDF renderer, and so that it is it's conceivable to imagine, particularly the Node.js edition of TiddlyWiki, creating a PDF. But the problem I have as a Mac user is the Mac makes it very easy to create a PDF from anything you can print. So it's basically, I think there might be something similar on Windows, but it's a print driver that creates a PDF. So bang, I've now got a PDF of, um, of that file. For so, Windows, there, sorry, for Windows there are some open source um, uh, software which makes it easy. It it's also in, installs a, a PDF printer. Mm -hmm. uh, so you yeah, can... but the Chrome browser has it anyway, so... Oh, it does it? It's built into Chrome? Well, that, then yeah. that, I, would Im I think that's probably going to be the most performance solution. But the plan here, so at the moment there's a um, download all tiddlers as static HTML um, in control panel. It takes a while to generate the static tiddler file, but if I now save that um, to my desktop and open it in, so opening it in Chrome, that's one jai humongous uh, HTML file that contains all of the tiddlers. So that shows how the desktop version, I'm sorry, how the browser version of TiddlyWiki can generate static exports. Um, and my plan would be to extend this to give you more flexible export options um, uh, and to have somewhere in here, uh, an export button as well. Perfect. Um, nah. Next question. Uh, what would be a useful use case for list before and list after fields? What should be put in these fields um, is a very good question. So the, um, I'll take you, um, I'll take you through why we ended up there. So you may, be aware of system tags within TiddlyWiki. These are the, um, the primary way in which one customizes TiddlyWiki by augmenting functionality. So um, one of them, for instance, is this dollar uh, colon slash tags page controls. And if we create a Tiddler with that tag uh, and call it Jeremy, and give it the text today, then by virtue of that tag, as soon as I press done, it, whoa, uh, it uh, gets added as part of the page control toolbar. And at the moment it's added it as text, but um, I could make it be a graphic. Now, if the user, say, wanted that hello button to be the second one, um, the way that they would do that is go to the page controls tiddler itself. So this is the tiddler that is that tag. And it can have a list field which lists the order um, in which items uh, should, well, sorry, lists the order for items. So here you can see it lists all of the available buttons here, the home button, perma view, new tiddler, control buttons, a control panel and save wiki. And so we could go in here and add Jeremy, oh, sorry, I need to edit it, forgive me. Um, so we could edit that page controls tag and add Jeremy there. And as soon as I do that, then Jeremy moves to the right place. The problem with that then 
is let's say that you want to give this Jeremy button to somebody else for them to add to their wiki. Um, it means that adding the button needs to also modify this page control tiddler, sorry, this tag tiddler to modify that list. And that's bad because the user should be the one who's customizing the order of those buttons. And it kind of has to be the user because this is a list of all of them, so it's only the user that knows which plugins they've installed that have provided buttons that they want to be able to put into the correct position. So what we do instead is bring in the list before and list after fields. So I'm going to, in fact, I'm going to delete the page tags page controls because it's a shadow tiddler. That means that it's just gone back to its uh, previous default contents, and you can see there's no mention of Jeremy in the list. So where we wanted it, I think, was uh, after new tiddler. So what we can do instead is add a field called list after and give it the value, the t sorry, the title of the uh, tiddler that we wanted it to, want it to be listed after. And now when I do that, that means that the Jeremy tiddler providing this text hello has been added to the second position without me having to modify the list within uh, the tag page controls. So it's really, it's about um, being, having flexibility in the way that w we specify the order of the items that carry a particular tag. And so the the trade-off is that you can control the order with the list field, but then there's only one list field and there's potentially um, contention because both a plugin that wants to add itself and the user themselves may wish to modify that field. So the alternative is that we use the list after field so that this tiddler itself can indicate where it should be spliced into the list, what the correct position is. Does that make sense, Brandon? Yeah, pretty much sense. I now I see that it's uh, mostly used for customization, mm -hmm. for That's layout right. customization. I I thought it would be for uh, putting titlers one after the others, but well, I mean the the other usage of lists is something that um, Dave Gifford's been playing with, which is um. Oh. I'm not. Sure sure that I've got the name right. Yes, okay. So this, I believe, is, yes, it's quite old, but Dave um, uh, made some quite interesting, um, uh, quite an interesting start on saying that I think he's now actually just about to pick up again, which is a really basic user guide for TiddlyWiki. And it uses these navigation buttons um, uh, to step backwards and forwards through a sequence. Um, and those navigation buttons are driven by a list. So the idea in the future is that we'll have a drag and drop editor so that you can reorder items in a list. Um, that's intended to give us something like drag and drop outlining so that you can move objects around in a sequence. That looks quite nice. Hmm. I'll have a look at it. Well, Dave's work, as ever, is pretty interesting. Oh, actually, that gives me an opportunity to try something. I posted a URL, and there's a new tool on Hangouts called Showcase, which allows me to post a link. So I think now, when people are watching this on YouTube, the link is going to pop up, oh, yes, <laughs> with a terrible, terrible, terrible preview. Um, okay, so there you go. Um, I think people watching along will get will now get that link. Um, okay, next message. Um, oh, sorry, next question. Branimir asking, what do you think about a new widget message like TW Reload or TW Refresh? Um, and that's a, um, just to be clear, I think what's intended there is a button on the page that would have the same function as pressing the browser refresh button. And the reason why that's relevant is because 
when we add a plugin to TiddlyWiki, it's normally necessary to restart TiddlyWiki before the plugin is loaded, before the plugin is active. Um, and uh, so I guess the idea of having it over here makes it more accessible within TiddlyWiki. Is that the idea, Brandon? Or is this about uh, use yeah, of use? I am referring to the previous TiddlyWiki Hangouts where I asked questions and you described the permalink behavior and mm -hmm. the new URL and you changed the default uh, behavior yeah. in TiddlyWiki. But with uh, this kind of message, uh, it would be, I've seen uh, home buttons. Ah, I see what you mean. So I would like to see a home button and the home button should not only show me the initial tiddlers but also the we, it will reload the page. That's very, this, That's very this interesting. This will this will also work in uh, Tiddly desktop application, so it will solve one question for uh, which I asked uh, two weeks yes, ago. Yes, yes, yes. No, do um. Okay, so uh, there is I added a home button as part of the these recent changes, and at the moment the home button does um, just open and close Tiddlers to return to the original default Tiddlers. So what you're proposing is a different action for the home button, which yes. would um, be better than refresh because it would clear the permalink as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Actually, I, think I, I need I think to I use the permalinks, but still want to be able to refresh to the initial state of the Tiddly Wiki. Uh, so home button should remove permalink and refresh. Uh, so I think that's possible. Um, there's um, JavaScript that can. Uh, it's possible from JavaScript to cause the browser to reload the current page, I believe. Um, so I think that's genius. Thank you, Brandon. I like uh, you. Like my questions. I thought it, they will be too novice or inappropriate, but no, but not at all. It's a very good example. I mean, I'm always saying this here that um, how valuable people's feedback is. Um, and just to be clear, you know, you know, my perspective is so deep within TiddlyWiki, um, and you know, even um, a lot of the talking about TiddlyWiki that I do to say Mario, um, you know, is all is all very, you know, we're quite deeply involved in it, and so actually, getting a fresh perspective on things is incredibly useful, both a fresh perspective in the sense of somebody who's thinking about TiddlyWiki's problems from a different perspective, but also, of course, um, the perspective of somebody who's less familiar with the inwardness. Um, I know it's terrific, really useful. Yeah, I would, I'm totally looking from a user perspective here and from uh, somebody who writes in uh, TiddlyWiki and other people read from it. So I get their... Uh, yeah, their and I think that's too. a really common use case of um, kind of publishing, really. Um, I mean, I found in the various jobs that I've done in offices, um, even though they use tools like Microsoft Word and PowerPoint and so on that anybody can edit, or you know, with SharePoint anybody can edit, vast majority of the time it's a very it's one person or a very small group preparing content that is then consumed by a larger number of people. Um, and it strikes me that our platform, TiddlyWiki, is Quite potentially quite good for that because it makes the uh, you know it, it optimizes things so that the ease of reading you get the most flexibility in terms of publishing a read-only tiddly wiki that you could imagine. Um, sorry, that was a barely coherent answer to your question. So um, I'll try and do that. So change the home message to make it do a refresh and clear the permalink. And, and that solves a problem that's bothered me for ages, which is that um, once you've got a permalink, it can be a real nuisance to get rid of it, and we absolutely need a button to neutralize it. Yeah. Um, and by the way, what I do plan to do as well is, in the same way that we've got an optional more button here, I plan to add an optional more button here so that people can access all the page controls, even the ones that aren't um, you know, currently enabled. Okay. Uh, will there be a renaming tags functionality for the stable version? No, in the sense that it's, it's not currently on the list of things that must be done before we get out of beta. But to be honest, Branimir, 
it was at one point and it probably should still be. Um, it's um, partly that recently we've um, we've gone quite brutal on taking things, um, you know, pushing things to beyond the first release. So uh, wider, in fact, than just renaming tags, we really need a decent um, full-blown search and replace uh, operation. Um, for what it's worth, though, I have taken some steps towards that, that the... Um, the new import functionality, when you, um, uh, so if I import a TiddlyWiki document, ooh, not a very pretty one, um, uh, I, as I explained last time, these Tiddlers, I can preview them, so they're in the wiki, but they're embedded in a sort of pending list. Um, uh, the idea is to do search and replace the same way, so the pending list would be a list of Tiddlers that have changed, and the preview would be um, a, a, a diff, you know, with um, uh, green and red bits showing what's been added and taken away. Um, because it strikes me that the the only problem worth tackling is is the difficult one of a of a global search and replace in practice. That's something that you want to, I think, have individual control over because it's so easy to make a mistake and uh, you know the the ability to laboriously eyeball changes before they're committed seems useful. So so the plan is absolutely absolutely to do search and replace search and replace of tags um, being um, uh, one of those well kind of being a special case to that. But there are also you've probably seen the tools that um, I can't remember who did them originally, but there's been a bunch of tag modification tools which um, rely more on Creating a filter to um, uh, to specify some tiddlers and then acting on them all at once. But anyway, the answer to your question is it's coming, but not till after we get out of beta. Jeremy, Jeremy, uh, Nathan joined again. Ah, and is blocked out. Nathan, sorry. Um, next question. Oh, sorry. Any comments on that? Well, we wait for it. <laughs> um, pull request accepted. Um, next question. Drag and drop an image from a website or another browser creates a tiddler with the link to that image. Can TiddlyWiki be modified so that an image tiddler is created instead? Um, <clears throat> uh, this is one of the areas where drag and drop is um, very inconsistent between browsers. Um, in the information that you get. So if I try to um, yeah, so I'm dragging an image there. Now uh, what it's offering me here is a link to BBC Good Food and that's because the image that I dragged is actually an image link. Um, if I try and find uh, If I try and find an image that doesn't have a link on it, okay. Well, maybe that was a uh, not such a. Uh, oh, I suppose to be wiki dot com will do actually. Um, well, I went to Google and searched for images and tried that way. Okay, so now I dragged one of our. D data URI images, and I get a blessed data URI tiddler, which is no good to man nor beast. Um, and okay, uh, let's search for pictures of Motovan because Motovan is the place where that little kitten was photographed. Um, and yeah, yes. that time again, we get a link to the image. Let's try. Let's just view the image on its own and see if we get any different behavior. Wow! Now that does, I must see, see, seem extraordinary that it's given us a blessing. I was image. trying to do exactly that, yeah. Um, well, then you find fun stuff like it's uh, you get different behavior uh, in between different browsers. So let's try. Oh, 
So, let's, um, no, I didn't mean that. I meant to do that. Oh, okay. We got the same thing between those two. Let's try. Okay, that way around, from Chrome to Firefox, it doesn't look like we're getting anything. Um, anyway, um, I guess now we could do slightly better, because we could now um, convert this into an external image tiddler. Um I mean, it, that wouldn't, to me, that wouldn't be the action that I would expect with an import is the problem with it. What I would expect if I do that and drag an action. So if I drag that image to my desktop, it gives me a copy of the image on my desktop. Um, and if I drag it into TiddlyWiki, I'd expect it to give me a, a copy of the image. Um, exactly, yeah. But um, so what I could do is take that URL um, and create the image tiddler with um, with that URI and uh, what was it, JPEG uh, and give it the right type and so now there you go. So that could be the result of dragging it but as I say to me that gives the user the highly misleading impression that they have kept, that they've retained a copy of the image when they haven't. So I'm not sure. If you copy the content directly into the TidWiki, you have a distribution licensing problem. Uh, for personal use, not so much. So I mean, um, I mean, for On sure, TiddlyWiki, I guess, like all these kinds of tools, you can use it for license infringement, but. Um, there's so many non-infringing uses. See, that way around, if I do copy image and then do a paste, um, which obviously only works in Chrome, then I do get an actual embedded image, um, which is, you know, so I can enjoy myself by editing it. So, Brandon, sorry, not a very adequate answer to your question. The um, the situation remains that um, that's one of the use cases, it's one of the activities that I would like to work, and it's not absolutely clear to me that I can make it work in a way that would meet my expectations as a user. Um, and so I sort of acknowledge and sympathize um, that this is an area that it would be nice for things to be a bit better in. It may be that um, Tiddly Desktop, again, might help us because... Um, Tiddly Desktop, you know, by virtue of being a, a custom browser, it gives us a good deal more control over what happens. You know, one of the things that I'd love to be able to do, which we're never going to be able to do in Chrome, is to drag a file from the file system in some special way, um, and for that to create a link to the local copy of the file on my file system. Um, and Tiddly Desktop can absolutely do that, um, but we'll never build it in Chrome. So you are planning it for the future or not planning it it's, at all? Well, it's an area that I'd really like to um, improve, but the concern at the moment is that we are very limited by what, by how browsers behave, um, and my my conclusion so far is that we may only be able to do a good job by stepping outside of the browser and working into the desktop. And by a good job, I mean the my expected behavior for dragging an image from a web page. Um, I mean, in fact, the other, the other thing that doesn't work as I would want, really, is I would like to... be able to drag that. Um, actually, no, that's not bad. I get a link. That's fine. Yeah. 
So here's a suggestion for drag and drop from uh, another website and from uh, local storage. You can uh, drag and drop a link and if it sees that it starts with HTTP and uh, continues until PNG or JPEG, then you, uh, you can ask whether the user uh, wants to have this just linked to the original image or to have the image embedded in the TiddlyWiki. And you can also do that with uh, local files. Because the trouble is, if they, if they choose to embed it, we don't have any way of getting at the image because we've only got its URL and you can't, although the browser will retrieve an image given its URL, we can't retrieve it in JavaScript. Oh, I see. But, I mean, I'm Brandon, don't be discouraged. Um, that's, um, uh, that's what... Um, uh, I mean, that's what it feels like trying to work in this drag and drop area that you sort of endlessly come across doors that slam in your face. But I'm sure that we can improve over what we've got. Um, the thing that would probably, I mean, the thing that I do quite regularly to investigate this stuff, let me just show you, um, is uh, to add some console statements so that one can see what is actually dropped. Um, so if I open the drop zone widget, um, there's a function that's called on handle drop event, and I always have to go in. Yeah, I won't try and do it live actually, but um, we could get it so that there was a mode that um, you know developer could invoke. Um, so that you can see what's actually coming in. Because basically, in a drag and drop operation, you get offered whatever the item is, you get offered it in multiple formats, and then it's for the receiving application to negotiate the format that it thinks is most appropriate. Um, and therefore, what you see doesn't give you a very good intuitive, I mean, what you see and might intuit about how it works doesn't actually give you a very good picture of what's going on behind the scenes, but if I did dump out this information, um, then uh, you, you know, anybody would be able to see what, what appears and would be able to make sensible inferences about how we could change the behavior to take advantage of you know, how different browsers handle different drag and drop operations. So I will um, that that this is something that crops up. I'm going to add a note to myself from the Hangout to say, um, add instrumentation to drop paste, which will make sense to me, even though it might not make sense to anybody else. Okay, so I realise. So I think that was the last question so far. Um, I realized although we talked about the um, new features around the toolbar buttons, one thing um, that we that I meant to mention and we didn't touch on was the arrival of variable operands for filters. So, um, where is it? Introduction to filters. So in the introduction to filters, there's... Uh, there was previously a section here about indirect operands, and now um, uh, we've added support for variable operands. So the content of the angle braces is interpreted as the name of a variable from which is retrieved the value that is actually used as the operand for the operator. Um, and I think there's been, certainly for me and I think for some other people, there's been quite a few cases where... Um, that's really required. Um, I was going through some torture to copy um, variable values into the current tiddler variable, which is accessible from within filters, um, but this hopefully obviates all of that. Um, okay. Uh, and documentation was um, inquired about uh, Stephen Sokolow has contributed um, quite a chunk more material for the TiddlyWiki architecture tiddler. Um, so everything from here downwards is Stephen. Um, and he, what he's trying to address 
um, I think, as, as I've also tried to, is to, to try and bridge the gaps from the kind of environments that people are used to. So here there's this point about um, plugins treating the DOM as read-only, uh, sorry, as write-only. And I think um, there's, yeah, in TiddlyWiki for developers, I, I make the same point here rather laboriously. So um, the that's all about developer documentation. The current situation with developer documentation is that we've had a uh, useful contribution from um, these two German students, which I think I showed you last week, who have been working on, um, oh, let me try and, look, this is exactly the problem. I want to get rid of the permalink so I can refresh it back to the default tiddlers. Um, right, so um, it's, it's really quite nice. Um, uh, developer documentation goes into some detail. They've added some diagrams, um, which are pretty cool. I think I was showing last time this diagram, which I really quite like. Um, so the idea is to take that, take this, as the basis for a new dev wiki, so tiddlywiki.com slash dev or something, which would have developer documentation. And the hope is that that would solve a problem where at the moment certain searches, maybe this is, wasn't a good example, brings up a, a good deal of developer documentation that's irrelevant for most users. Um, I think it was Dave Gifford mentioned this quite some time ago that um, it puts quite a burden on casual users to have information in the documentation that isn't relevant for them because um, although you'd like to think that they can just ignore it, in fact, it pops up in response to searches and so on and then less and just makes TiddlyWiki look more complicated. Um, so that's developer documentation. I'm uh, The front page tiddlywiki.com is still a work in progress. I showed you last week how there's now a tab in the Getting Started Tiddler so that we can give specific instructions for the current browser. Um, but I haven't yet reworked these instructions here um, to fit that form. Um, the, this stuff now that we're moving to, um, you know, we need to get the thing ready for not being in beta. That opening proposition is, I think, all wrong. Um, and TiddlyWiki now needs to present itself primarily for the users who would class themselves as, as non-developers and you know, non-technical casual users and provide signposts such as this um, for the more sophisticated users. Um, yeah, and that, that's all over the place. It shouldn't say open source so near the top. You know. um, and the warning about TiddlyWiki Classic can now, I think, be made much um, less prominent. Anyway, the one of the things that um, uh, prompted the, the uh, um, putting talking about documentation on the um, on the agenda was that Nathan's girlfriend um, has recently been looking at TiddlyWiki with a view to using it as a means of publishing a static site. So that's a use case that I think is very good and important, that one works on one's stuff within a private tiddlywiki in one's Dropbox in the normal way, um, and one hits a publish button, and then those tiddlers that are tagged article or blog post or something get baked into a static site. So it's a collection of HTML files, CSS, images, etc. And tiddlywiki is very much capable of doing that, um, but Nathan's girlfriend's experience um, made it clear that the documentation there is not good. Um, I think it's actually worse than the documentation. I think the fact that um, you have to install Node.js is um, a pretty catastrophic hurdle for many users, um, even though installing Node.js is the simplest thing that you can imagine. It's a one-click install. Um, it's... Uh, uh, 
it's not really a, a type of activity that most users are familiar with. You know, they may have installed Office, a conventional GUI application, but installing something like Node, um, coming across um, administrator passwords, all that stuff is, I think, um, just a little bit more unfamiliar and alien to most users. So one, oh, sorry, go on. And now tell me, I, I have a question for Nathan. Is she working with uh, Mac or is she working with Windows or? Um, they're primarily Windows. Okay. Uh. Um, and I think there's definitely a documentation issue there, but even if we documented what needed to be done, Nathan's girlfriend may very well and very sensibly <laughs> run away screaming because um, the actual steps required, say, conceptually are quite alien and look like a lot of complexity. But Nathan asking the question made me think that a lovely thing to do would be to put the functionality in Tiddly Desktop. So you could imagine here that um, for one of my wikis, there might be a configure publication button. And when I click that button, I can then specify, oh, and let's say an FTP site to which a static version of the Tiddly Wiki is then synchronized whenever I hit the publish button, which would replace the setup publication button once I'd set up publication. Um, and that actually looks like quite a nice turnkey system to me that one could, um, uh, um, you know, you'd need to install Tiddly Desktop, but at least that's just like installing other apps and people are, at least I'm arguing, used to the trade off of the hassle and um, uh, of installing an app. For you know being worth it if you get something back that you couldn't do before, um, and yeah, I think uh, what, it's actually something I want to be able to do. So at the moment, germaline.com um, takes you to my tiddly space. Um, gosh, or not, as the case may be, it's dawning on me that what went wrong before might well be a DNS redirect thing actually. Um, Jeremy, uh, Alex, Alex joined. Awesome. Actually, regarding the Tiddly Desktop, it's uh, the easiest uh, application to install anywhere, even on Linux and on Windows. So it's a much better solution than Node.js. Uh, yes, I think so too. And um, I'm very excited, uh, saying to Nathan before the call started, I think it's the big untapped potential for me as a developer um, with Tiddly Wiki 5 that what it lets us do is gives us all the familiarity um, and convenience of the single file way of working while still being able to access all the functionality that currently requires people to break out Node.js and yeah I mean I, uh, I, I'm, I've said each time I've shown this I'm sure but even just the ability to do the screenshots um, is remarkably cool because doing that in Node.js is actually a nightmare. You have to use Phantom.js or something and have a fake browser. And of course, browsers don't let you do it. Um, and I can tell you horror stories about how um, YouTube, for a long time, they had a tool that let you take a screenshot of the page that you were on when you had a tech support question. And they painted onto a canvas an emulation of the current DOM in order for that to work. Absolutely bizarre, extraordinary thing. Um, all working around the fact we can't do things like this. Um, so any other thoughts about documentation? Because um, otherwise uh, another, I know there's something. Uh, another particular point that, that she brought up um, was she one thing that she was kind of struggling with was she didn't feel that there was sort of a, a good linear flow through the documentation. Um, she <laughs> felt it was almost sort of too wikified. Um, she was looking for something that was sort of, you know, this is how you start Hello World and then, you know, sort of took you through the concepts in some order, and, and she felt that order got very lost very quickly. Um, yeah, it's not like a user guide. Right, right. Um, and, and, you know, she, it, it was sort of awkward to her to, you know, how much she had to sort of rely on, on the search um, and, and sort of digging for things manually to, to find particular bits of information that she was looking for. Mm. Uh, didn't, didn't the content tab help in this way? It, it, yeah, to a point, but it's still... Um, 
And there's no next or previous or anything, I guess. Mm -hmm. There's no indication of where you are. And it's still not very um, um, consecutively ordered, meaning mm -hmm. it, it offers mm -hmm. some organization, mm -hmm. but, but perhaps yeah. not an ordering. Yeah, no, I think you're right. It doesn't... Um, uh, I mean, there, there is some attempt to try and put things in a logical order, but, um, uh, but yeah, no, I think that's fair. I mean, in terms of um, responding to the point with a sort of structural programming -er um, uh, perspective, one of the things I've wondered about is having imaginatively wiki where when you visited it, there was a row of tabs across the top where the left-hand tab was basically what we have at the moment, a story, and when you click a link on the tiddler, it opens in that column. But the, the other tabs are fixed stories that um, it therefore are more like the table of contents, in fact. It's a fixed sequence of tiddlers that has been determined by the author of the wiki. And then, I guess, if you were in one of those other tabs and you clicked on a link, then it would open in the story tab. Um, and the and then my motivation in thinking, so I don't think that's a great idea, as I've expressed it, but the motivation is actually the same, that um, I feel in a couple of places, and it's really only one or two, that we um, do actually have a... Um, a bit of step-by-step -step stuff going on. So let me show you. Filters, Tiddler. No, introduction to filters, this one. Um, is actually very sequential. So it does sort of build step-by-step. -step. I think it's still way too overwhelming because in just a couple of page scrolls, it's got to very complicated stuff and there's insufficient examples. Um, but one of the challenges I find with this type of material is, well, you know, it's not very... Um, what TiddlyWiki wants me to do is to break each of these into individual tiddlers, and then you, know, you go back to the original problem that um, the information seems... Um, uh, what's the word? Um, you know, um, separated out. Um, incoherent. Jeff, so, yeah. I think... I think uh, uh, so let's say step by step instructions uh, mainly is uh, I think the community is responsible for for this to get some how tos uh, that just cover one topic. So for example, yeah. uh, uh, how how do you do uh, or how do you deal with tags? Um, yes. And just cover this I don't know in in five or six or seven tiddlers yeah. uh, with the step by step instructions. So this yeah. is something like one blog post about one specific topic for TiddlyWiki. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah th th there is some some pages, yeah, from from uh, Dave or something. Or also Tom has has a lot of of great stuff, um, but yeah, that's not enough. Right? No, well, I think I mean it's it's a long mission. I mean, I I yeah. want to, this tutorial stuff, the the step by step sequential stuff. I absolutely want to go on tillywiki.com this time around. Um, so we, you know, at least the basics of getting up and running. I think we absolutely should aspire to a decent standard of step-by-step -step documentation aimed at making a reasonably smart person who's used to using computers not feel stupid. Where I think at the moment the instructions probably do make people feel very stupid. Um, the other thing I keep thinking is that. Um, a habit that I could easily get into, and I'm not in it yet, um, is doing really quick screencasts to answer some of the questions on the group. Um, mm -hmm. So there are certain of them that, you know, I look at them and I think, gosh, actually, I could just do a two-minute guide um, that explained things and showed, you know, you get all that stuff where you try and describe what you have to click on and it ends up sounding complicated where showing people is so much simpler. Um, so yeah, maybe, and again, of course, anybody can do that too. Um, and if we did have even the germ of a smattering of a library of video hints and tips, I would, um, you know, obviously list them all on, on to the wiki.com. And I notice part of this is because if you do something like, I, I, I like playing with um, video editing software. Um, uh, so with Final Cut Pro, if you try and do something like um, 
if I Google something that I don't know how to do. Um, almost that exception now. The software stuff that I see, it's videos that come to the top as the um, uh, as the as the you know, Google's best hit for um, tuition. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I think I think it depends. That. It depends a little bit on the on the type of the of the user. Because that there are some people that uh, like to uh, watch a video and and yeah. use it, and there are others which just need to read something. So yeah. It's yeah. Well, the I mean that that's um, something we've talked about before about how. Um, oh, that, I've got big fonts. So that's right. Yes. Um, looking at my channel stats, I never know how to navigate in. Uh, <coughs> How do I get to it? Actually, something that is good for video as a tutorial is something which comprised of uh, just a small number of steps that have to be shown because the user has to go to TillyWiki and then try them for themselves. If yeah. it's something more complex, it uh, should be uh, e- either split to several videos or yeah. it should be uh, explained in writing. And then, well, I think splitting it up in small videos is all possibly key to me being able to do more of them, just for me personally. Um, this is so baffling. How do you get to the video manager? The use of the sense of video manager that you went to and made you your videos. And now... No idea. Jerry Ruston. Video manager. Right. So when you come in, you get stats down the right hand side. I'm sure we've looked at this before. So we're getting um, 70, 100 hits on the Hangouts, which I think is amazing, really. Um, I've, I've, I've frequently made the point that for me, um, uh, they're worth it just in terms of the uh, feedback and ideas that I get and so on, um, and the fact that they're useful for even a handful of other people is pretty amazing. Um, but what's quite interesting is there, when you get to introducing to the desktop three and a half thousand views, and then uh, a little bit further back, um, getting started with Tiddly Wiki 5, 5,000 views. And both of those are embedded on tiddlywiki.com, and they're not actually that super accessible. Um, but I take that as a strong indicator that there's quite an appetite for. Um, for video material, um, you know, on tiddlywiki.com. Mm. And I, I also think if there is, yeah, uh, let's say up to three minutes video, uh, which really explains the topic, um, I think it's it's uh, the time mm. that people are, uh, yeah, are able to, to invest uh, to get information about the new feature. Or well, let's say if, if it's mm. shorter, then the, the shorter the better. So if you have a, a one-minute introduction that can do it, uh, it would be nice. Yeah, I, I, and, and you do see, uh, so when I'm stumbling around looking at videos of other software packages, you do see lots of Marios who maintain um, you know, um, channels of, about particular bits of software. It does look like a habit that we can get ourselves into. Mm-hmm. Also, videos can show some complex examples like uh, combining filters or... Mm. more obscure filtering options that uh, users can use but would never think of. Mm. And uh, then they could provide the TiddlyWiki example so that the watchers can try them for themselves. Mm. Indeed, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the, the, uh, the time uh, that you need to prepare the stuff in that way, so if you have a TiddlyWiki example that's re- that really works and the video uh, is, is much more than than just having a video, yeah? because you have to prepare all the stuff and upload it and maintain it. So, uh, I've got some of that quite nicely integrated and quick now for, on my setup. But but look, anyway, I, I think we should move on because um, Alex is here particularly because I suggested earlier on over Twitter um, that um, it would be cool if you could turn up, and that was prompted by a conversation over Twitter, which I will now show you. Um, so, um, 
Uh, Alex was pointing out a thing called kumu.io, um, which is a quite nice looking and uh, well, in a sense, I think it's a GitHub for data. Um, uh, it gives you where was it that I was. Um, and uh, it features nice visualizations of the data. And yeah, I think the visualizations are different. Is that right, Alex? I mean, there's um, well, yeah. What I liked about it. Well, first of all, hello everybody. Um, oh yes, Alex. Sorry, you should introduce yeah. yourself. Would you mind? Yeah. Well, I'm Alex. Yeah, I've uh, spoke to a number of you before, I think, uh, especially Mario. And, really with Tom. I don't know if I met, I met you, Tom. If not, hello. I've seen you on the videos. That's so nice. Um, sort of a been using Tickler Wiki for a long time. I'm just returning to it, really, after a period of just being away from any sort of computers in terms of uh, note-taking and stuff like that. I've, I've been drawing in a book, which has been very nice. Um, the interesting thing about this Kumu, to me, really, was um, part of it was the, the discovery story of the route that I discovered it, and it was through um, through a community of systems people, um, and I think there was sort of a dis general dissatisfaction with any type of um, solution which visualizes links between things. Um, so. Um, so I think this is one which has been, it's quite new, I think, and um, it's kind of been investigated by um, Systems Thinking World, and I thought, well, okay, let's have a look at it. Uh, I think it's quite good. Um, um, it's very nice. It's very nice. And, I mean, I really um, like the this part, the social part of their presentation, um, the way that we've got users and... Uh, Oh, well, it looks like I can't. I thought, I, oh, yes, no, that's the thing that that user made that I can click through to. Yeah, you've got, see. yeah, you've got sort of sharing on the, on the free, on the, you can, the, the deal is you get a free, you can, you can make a free graph uh, and then share it and then you go into the um, pay, well, pay, to, pay to play scenarios. Hilariously. So can, yeah. Go, go on, sorry. Oh, yeah, so. That's it. That's their model. But I think what I liked about it, well, and then I think, I think I'm always a sucker for those type of uh, graphs. You know that, that they look they look fantastic, don't they? And it's mind mapping. It's like the brain. It's like everything yeah. else you've seen. But it, it looks it looks nice, and and it's it's in the browser, which I think well, is not let really. Me Let's um. There's. Th let me throw in three other things to this discussion. <laughs> so the first is I've recently become interested in what are called, or well, he doesn't want them to be called Wardley maps. So it's a particular type of business mapping, um, and it uses this very simple idea that you. I mean, I gosh, I'm the worst person at summarizing such things, but there's the y-axis is the value chain from the value that a customer sees through to the invisible things that you need at the back end of the value chain to deliver to the customer. So here, we're delivering things like websites and 3D visualizations to the customer. Further down the, the, at the invisible end of the, of the value chain, we've got things like power, data center, compute facilities. And the x-axis is that standard sort of innovation curve so it's things being um, Genesis custom built through to productized and evolved. And so the idea is that you can map your strategic situation um, on, on, this, um, on these axes and that, that helps you to see patterns um, that would otherwise be obscured by all the kind of specifics. So it's a tool in strategic analysis. And I think not so much that I, I mean, I'm, I think the technique looks interesting, but I really love the general thing of making maps as a way to, and you'll all remember Cecily, which I think of as a map yeah. tool. Um, furthermore, 
Um, I've been looking at, in terms of Tilly representation, this, which is probably incomprehensible over, uh, and let me try and make it all, everything a bit bigger. Um, so uh, the bit that's relevant is it's another of those diagrams. In this case, it's showing how when TiddlyWiki renders itself, it renders the page template, which that means renders everything tagged with page template, which are all of those things. And then in turn, what you're seeing here is the um, how each of those um, fan out and include more templates. So right down here, the templates are the templates for each individual button in the view toolbar. So um, this is prompted by the work that Stephen Sokolow had been doing on TiddlyWiki documentation. And we both realized that these kinds of diagrams are really useful for some of our documentation tasks and that drawing them manually is a mugs game. It's incredibly um, error prone and of course um, it's hard to keep things up to date. So that has taken me back to looking at something called viz.js, which is a JavaScript visualization toolkit um, that is um, less well known than D3, but it's really a very different beast than D3, where D3 is a set of primitives um, that allow you to build a, you know, an infinite variety of visualizations. Um, Viz.js is firmly about a small number of visualizations, this timeline, and you can see different sort of variations of it with different bits of functionality, quite a lot of different bits of functionality. But These, there's also interaction. Indeed, indeed. These network graphs, which we'll come back to, and then boring old, well, they're not that boring, they're quite interesting, um, sort of mathsy graphs. So these ones are pretty cool. That um, It looks to me like um, uh, not quite the same code as, um, as what we were just looking at on the Kumu site. Um, and it's a bit, some of the interactions are a bit clunkier to control. Um, but we do see from this that there's plenty of flexibility in the API. So this guy, for instance, which um, for some reason for me, it's only being rendered in that letterbox up at the top. But um, I really liked the way that it uses lines of um, different width um, mm -hmm. to convey different bits of information and the way that those, you know, the, the thick lines curve and bend <laughs> in the way that they should. Uh, so yeah, this has all been rather on my mind that um, uh, I'd like a solution that um, you know, uh, would um, span all three of these use cases. So that's generating TiddlyWiki documentation diagrams from data in the TiddlyWiki source code, um, generating things like Wardley maps, which is much more about uh, human agency positioning things. Um, and then in terms of this stuff, I'm not quite sure what the functionality they give you is besides the actual map. Um, you, can, you can group. It's basically it's grouping okay. things, okay. and they. I think. Um, okay. No, this. I, I think they. they when I was, we had a, a little exchange on the. What I thought was nice about it. Yeah. Was that uh, the visual? Because basically, if you group things, you could just you could view things which are tagged the same with the same yeah. tag, and they all they draw some lines between them. And it's another it's another way of displaying a list, really. Um, and, indeed, uh, that is maybe uh, worth pointing people at the conversation we had, um, yeah. which I got on the screen here. That um, uh, Alex has thought was well, as he's just said, graphic representations of similarly tagged items seem less hierarchical than a list. And I think what you're getting at there is the way that um, the second I put all of the things that carry a particular tag in a list, then that ordering kind of implies something, um, yeah. and it may that ordering may or may not be meaningful. But I mean, for instance, if um, we were building something where Participants had to pick something. You know, having an order would mean they'd be more likely, I think, to choose I think, uh, certain positions. I think uh, what I, I like about TiddlyWiki is that you you change the way you read back your own information. Mm, mm. And I'd like to s sort of surprise myself, or yeah. or not be biased yeah. by something which is in 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 yeah. the in the system. You know, so alphabetical bias, for example, yeah. or 
yeah. most recent or what have you. Uh, and um, I think we maybe that's not to say. I mean, you came back with this very interesting thing about intertwingled. It's really, but it's a comment on the second part of what you said. You were saying lists are hierarchical by their nature, and um, I was trying to say that lists eat hierarchies because we can build hierarchies out of lists, mm. and that further than that, as Nelson says, we can build um, mind-bending <laughs> structures um, by folding lists over. Um, and so what he says, I mean. Um, we may be at the risk of losing people here, but I think the um, you mentioned this intertwingularity in Ted Nelson. I think can yeah. you just kind of it seems to be a, a, something which you're particularly um, keen on. Yeah, uh, I I think I've probably talked about this before. It's um, Ted Nelson is um, uh, a, a a towering figure in our field. And he writes in this. I'm not sure if this is the authoritative um, essay of, oh no, this isn't even by Ted. So this is a description of Ted's ZZ structure by somebody else. So in fact, this probably is quite a good way to start. But uh, if we find, right, here's Ted's description. And the thing is, when you read this, oh, my internet's working slowly. Okay. So what is it? It's a database and visualization system and it's the true generalization of structure. So the kind of claim that he's making is that uh, conventional data structures, especially tables and arrays, are confined, structure, confined structures created from rigid top-down specification that enforce regularity and rectangularity. Um, and uh, in contrast, zigzag, which is his trademark term for this new structure, um, is created from individual relations bottom up and is irregular and unlimited. And he's somewhere, yeah, here he says it's the most general data structure able to replace tables, arrays, spreadsheets, relational databases, intrinsically offering built in visualization and hands on controls. And so you read this stuff and you think, gosh, that sounds exciting. Is this man mad? And um, a bit of Googling suggests that you're not the first person to question. Uh, to raise that question. Um, but I think it was actually particularly when I read this description um, that it finally um, dawned on me um, what he was trying to do and how it worked. And I, I don't know that we should go too deeply into it. Um, but it's roughly, imagine that each tiddler carrying a tag carried a pointer to the next and previous tiddlers with the same tag. And imagine further that those double pointers didn't necessarily match up, as in going forwards and then going backwards doesn't necessarily take you to the same place, which obviously the underlying data structure intrinsically that would be the case. Um, and his contention that this is a general purpose format, I kind of buy because, as I say up here, you know, cheering shows that all computation can be reduced to manipulations of a single list. And Lisp, I think, shows us that you can build a fertile mental toolkit for human programmers by giving them certain primitives for operating on lists. So you know, Lisp, I think, proves that lists are an adequate metaphor for programmers. Um, and yeah, so I mean, uh, all of that isn't really a reflection on um, on Alex's original point about um, the value of showing similarly tagged items in a structure other than a list. Um, and I'm completely with you that I I, lo I love the idea of my own stuff being thrown back at me. Um, it's like the it's like, I think, what people go to therapists for. You know, you tell therapists a whole bunch of stuff, and then um, they surgically um, give you the critical bit of feedback, which is actually pushing back at you something that you said yourself. But you're, but you're looking for a bit of a surprise from... Yes. The sort of a chance, something... Chance connections, you know, hmm. Tillywicky's there for, for making... The serendipity sure. thing, yeah. I couldn't, and, agree, and, more. Um, I couldn't agree more. And... Um, well, I think I think there's probably biases in in visual structures where you always maybe pick something at uh, two o'clock or something over 
seven yeah. o'clock or something, top right or top left maybe, you know, so that you get into all of that. But um, you do. And then, I mean, so, that, and then that's... sort of question, you know, these these uh, on Kumu. Would it be just better as a list? <laughs> uh, and yeah, you can change the one of the visualizations is of people who are involved in PayPal, and it's got, you know, the the, the larger size circle means that they've got more money. And well, you can just list list them and <laughs> who's got the most money, <laughs> you know, <laughs> top ten. So uh, so the more you think about it, you kind of think, well, you, the visuals can, can can also mislead you as well. A lot of information visualization things got you can you can you can um, yes you you can yes. sort of accuse it of being pretty rather than useful. Um, yes, so. although gosh, that is quite an interesting graph, isn't it? But um, uh, so I think roughly uh, the big thing I'm saying oh oh wait, the crucial thing I'd missed out is that somebody else has already. Integrated the timeline component into LiWiki. I don't believe yeah. it's been updated into yeah. uh, more recent uh, into more recent versions of the core. And it's got, it has got a nice um, sort of uh, network structure thing on that on here, hasn't it? Uh, this one. Uh, yeah, the JSViz seem to be yes. the. Um, I think the chap, the same chap, did the timeline and then did. That's right, yeah. Um, but you could, I think with the Kumu thing, the way it's got the, the two sides split. Yes, I like um, that too. That works really well. You could imagine the, the left hand side being your tiddler, being tiddlers. Yes, so you, click, the right -hand on the, you side, click on the tiddler yeah. on the right and it just yeah. shows, well, in fact, yes, exactly as they've got it here. Yeah, um, but I think I'd like, I prefer, I prefer it to be tiddly and quickie. Uh, well, I, think, I think one of the, just, they're going on a little bit. The you're uh, in your fifty, the, the hangout fifty three when you were talking about the ten years of Tiddlywicky. I think you yeah. made a really valuable point about um, privacy and intimacy, and this is. Um, I don't think I, this Kumu tool. I'd ever. I I, I, would, I don't think I could produce anything of. I couldn't use it as a thinking tool at all. But it's not. It hasn't got that. That intimacy. Um, no, it's all. I don't public. trust it. Public. Um, so. It has a nice thing where you they input um, spreadsheet data, which is quite nice. Which yeah. I know Eric did that with. Um, yes, we were on that. A, a, a classic. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think we can do better than this. I really do. Yeah. Um, Gosh, and what's their pricing model? Whoa, whoa. Well, they're optimists, aren't they? Yeah. How extraordinary. And the most valuable thing, email support, you get in the free plan as well. <laughs> well, you don't get the you don't get the private stuff. Is the private uh, no, indeed. It's just that the, 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 that's the most expensive thing that they're offering here, isn't yeah. it? In actual fact, it is a person answering the email. It's it? privacy. Um. So, um, but I thought um, that little exchange and your reflections on the ten years of Tiddlywick is kind of some other some sort of cause to, to do some sharing of information now. So that's why it kind of brought me along today. Um, awesome. Okay. Well, those people, um, Eugene Kim, is um, in. Our collective extended circles, in fact. Um, he was. Okay, so he's only listed as Kumi. But... Anyway, um, I have to go early today, I'm afraid. So I think in the next, um, uh, we should sort of finish up and then I must buzz off. Oh, and you were saying, can you share a link? Oh, did you. Which no, link it's all right, it's just a. Um... The Wardley one. Oh, right. Did you get that one? Um, let me paste it in. But, uh... um, he's a, he's a, um, quite a fun guy to read, I must say, this guy, Simon Wardley.
pretty highly recommended. Um, so, guys, um, one thing that I'd like to do just before we close, just to talk very briefly about my plans for the next week or so. Um, I'll confirm in the next few days, but I'm, uh, there may not be a Hangout next week. We may have a gap until two weeks' time before the next Hangout. Um, I'll be working on those things that I took notes for. Um, but let me just show you quickly the finishing 5.014, um, which is basically about um, getting started and hello there. Um, blacklisting the known incompatible plugins, which I think we touched on um, last week. So hopefully, uh, while we're still in this week, um, 5.014 will come out. Um, but um, maybe Friday or Saturday, I'm hoping. Uh, tell me one question. Can you can you open the um, Tiliki 5 issues list or uh, pull requests? Yeah. Um, I did a pull request with the... Um, um, Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I did a pull request for the... Um, oh, uh, five days ago. Split it em emphasis chairs. Oh, yeah. yes, of course. Um, uh, is there too much uh, code duplication or...? Well, I think um, that uh, most of the duplication is comments. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and, and, and yeah, the, no, I think so it's fine at the moment. It's um, always the same, so there is the... The uh, starting, uh, let's say, regex and the uh, end regex, which have to be changed, and the comment uh, has to has to be adjusted. But the mechanism is always the same. The advantage now is uh, that you can disable uh, yeah. any uh, yeah, highlighting, for example, or bold or italics um, separately with the with the rules pragma. So <coughs> I. I I did a test with uh, rendering or uh, the whole Tiliwiki static. Um, there is no difference, so it should be uh, the code should be the same as uh, well, the, the result of the code should be the same as with the old uh, rendering mechanism. Cool. Well, I shall. Um, I'll get that into uh, fourteen, obviously. Um, oh, it looks like I'm. Oh, okay, that's happened. Yeah, the German the German there. translations will follow follow shortly. Yes, well, I'm afraid Paul Bram um, is brilliant at dealing with the translations very quickly, but it does mean that he's um, pumping out um, several pull requests a day, which must be a great nuisance. But much appreciated. Okay, um, let me unscreen share. Um, so from me, it's thank you again very much. Uh, today, particularly, I think, uh, I'm very grateful to you, Branimir, for bringing me um, a couple of cracking ideas, um, particularly that home button thing, um, which really solves the permaview problem for me. So thank you for that. Um, uh, Alex, it was great that you could join us. Um, I think the, um, if anything, for me, I would like there to be more discussions at Hangouts that are about using TiddlyWiki and you know what we were doing there, talking, uh, helping me really to understand um, TiddlyWiki's potential for other people. Um, and so that's really good to to do that. Don't be put off by the fact that we have a lot of discussions that are, you know, deep in the code um, that really just reflects where we are with the development cycle. Um, but um, uh, over time, I would like these Hangouts, I think, to be less technical. Probably, um, and I think that will happen naturally as we move out of the move out of the beta period. So I'll let you all. Uh, obviously, I'll issue an invite um, for the next hangout, whether it's next Tuesday or next week. Um, but in the meantime, guys, thank you very much indeed. Um, Alex, Branimir, Mario, Nathan, Ton, much appreciated. Appreciate your time, and I shall look forward to seeing you next time. And I hope you all have a great time in the meantime. Many thanks. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.